Good morning. My name is Annette Fairchild, and I am your liturgist today. Welcome to Gibson City United Methodist Church. All of you who are here and who are listening on WGCY or uh, watching on Facebook. Um, announcements. Um, our giving tree is back here. Um, it has hats and gloves again to give away to families during um, giving tree pickup. So if you're out and about and are able to pick up some hats and gloves, please leave them on the tree. Uh, the Giving Tree is an opportunity for us to help kids in our community with winter supplies and Christmas gifts, and we are hoping to provide coats and winter boots again to those who are in need. There's an online sign up for that this year, so if you need information, please contact the office. They can send that info to you via email or text. There are currently 53 families signed up for help. Uh, please visit the site and register for a gift or two. If you can't shop, please consider sponsoring a tag. Uh, we're asking for a $50 donation per child again this year. Um, and then they still need some help shopping, so if you're able, please contact the office and we can help you with how shopping works. Next Sunday is March to the Manger. Um, we present a live nativity to honor a special offering for our four supported missionaries, and there will even be a special song from our kids. On Christmas Eve, there will be walk-in communion available in the sanctuary from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then on Christmas Eve, the service will be at 7, um, and it will be full of music, so be sure to join us. Are we ready to praise and worship God? better um all right well now we're gonna have the call to worship if you would mm, never mind don't stand just team. kidding and uh the confirmation classes doing yeah, membership class doing it yeah so i get to rest sure good morning good morning we are the confirmation class of 2021 I am Lucas Clinton. I am Jacob Chase. I'm Addison Farmer. All right. <laughs> There's a candle lighter there. If you want to light off the Christ candle, push it up with the one. Then light the three purple ones after they're done reading. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I'm going to ask those uh, folks that I, this is kind of a uh, ab lib, if you will, but I think it's important 
because if you look through, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of presents over here around the Christmas tree. So a few guys that I've asked, if you go grab one of those presents, uh, today's the day they're to be turned in, and I know there'll be some some more coming, but uh, I think we had better stop and bless these presents before we get them distributed. All in favor, say aye. All right. All right. You three are dismissed. Thank you. There we go. Let's, uh, let's face out. And I know this might seem a little Pentecostal to you. I like that. Because I like to go visit my Pentecostal friends because there's a lot of life there. They shout and scream and every once in a while without even asking, they say amen. Come on. Yeah, amen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, there it was. So if you all will stand... And from where you are, just pretend you're touching one of these gifts. Okay, just your hands out and just like that. I don't know how many years, God, you've given us this blessing of having what we call the angel tree. <clears throat> but every year, there are literally hundreds of children who have Christmas because of what you allow us to do for you. So it's appropriate that we stop and we praise you and thank you for the gifts that are here for the hearts that will be blessed. May blessings rain down from heaven as these are opened and your son's birth is celebrated. It's in your name that we ask these blessings and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'm glad we did that. Thank you. Now, you don't get to keep those. You've got to put them back under the tree. So, yeah, well, I lied, okay? Glenn, one of us is lying. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Number 224. <laughs> Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and song and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Gears we've born for this. Christ was born for today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. News, news. <laughs> I love that. Says born today. He is opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus was, was born to save, calls you one calls you all the gain has everlasting Christ was born for this yeah Christ was born to save you may be seated I'm going to invite the kids to come up and grab a sock and go around today is mission sock time and then when you get done with the socks Put them on the altar, and then we'll come and sit down and have a children's time. Is that fair? Sure.
If you run out of socks, just take the basket. going to walk around a minute. That's all right if he walks around a minute, isn't it? Well, yes. Uh-oh, somebody blew a shoe. Who was that? Oh, Gabe, here's your shoe if you want it. All right. <laughs> he threw the shoe right off. That happens, doesn't it? All right. Here, come here and sit right here next to me on this side. We, got all, we can fill this whole area up, can't we? All right. Hey, good morning. For those of you who are listening on WGCY, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 young people up here, and they want to help me talk about first fruit. Have you ever heard that? First fruit. What do you think it would mean? First fruit on earth, maybe. There's an idea. Maybe the first fruit, or maybe vegetable, if it's vegetable, but maybe the first fruit that grows on the farm. Any other thoughts? Okay, you got a thought? So the first fruit was probably invented. Oh, you think it was invented? 
from a farm, okay? Well, I want to tell you, first fruits come from God. So I guess the inventor, as you're thinking about it, would be God. Yeah. We tend to use the word creator, but that's okay. It, it can work that way. I can see how you're thinking. Um, are you talented at anything? What would be the thing that you are most talented at? Okay, what do you think you're talented at? At dancing. Is that right? Do you want to dance a little for us? I just thought I'd ask. All right. Yes. Using chopsticks. Well, I hope that you and I get the chance to go to Chinese together and use our chopsticks Playing soccer, indoor or outdoor? Both. I'd probably play um, like a basketball. Basketball. First fruit, what are you good at? Lennon, you good at anything? What would that be? Baseball. I have first fruits in many areas of my life. I play music. I'm good looking. Whoa! Oh, I, I, I just said that to make you laugh. Okay. First fruits are the things that you recognize as a gift from God. I think you're pretty good with mission socks, don't you all? They, they do a great job on mission socks. Yeah. So... The idea of first fruit is to remember to give that very first part of whatever your gift or talent is to God and use it for God. So if we could take our very best and instead of, let's say, I like the idea about farmers and let's say you have an apple orchard. And you've waited all year long, and it's coming fall, and it's time to pick the apples. That's the first fruit in apples, right? So that very first apple you would pick, you would pick that and offer it to God. And you would say, thank you, God, for this apple. Now, how that works with you is... Thank you, God, that I'm able to dance. And when I dance, I'm going to dance for you to make you happy. When I play soccer, I'm going to play soccer to make you happy, God. When I am in baseball, I'm going to do it for you. I am very talented at eating pizza. So next time I eat pizza, I'm going to make sure I thank God for the pizza. Do you ever do that before you eat? No. Thank God. You do too. You pray every time before okay. you eat. Remember? Yeah. yeah. I don't. You don't? Your mom's a good cook. Okay. First fruits are those very first things that we give to God right off the bat. Hey, remember to do that, especially if you're using chopsticks. Because when I was learning to use chopsticks, I was horrible. I had to use two hands to do it. I can use one hand now. <laughs> you need it. Yeah, there's an easier way. Use a fork. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, you show me someday, okay? We'll do that. We'll go eat Chinese together. All right. Hey, that's all I wanted to talk about. Let's pray. That's a good thing. First fruits. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for chopsticks and dancing and all the things that you create in us to do. Let us remember to offer back to you the very first fruit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Good to see you. <laughs>
All right. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruits in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham. Even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory to the Father. Oh yeah, go right ahead, Ruth. All right, I was being I was being asked by my daughter-in-law a question, and I don't know. Why don't we sit down and enjoy the choir?
Amen. Yes. When I was in seminary, I had a professor. I was just thinking, uh, he said, every time I teach, I take my shoes off. Well, let's see if that helps today, okay? <laughs> the Synoptic Gospels are Gospels that have the same stories in them. And today's story is found in two of the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke takes a broader approach than Mark because Mark says, you know, he addresses the church leadership. And Luke starts like this. He said, therefore, to the crowds, okay? Therefore, to the crowds, not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees. So who makes up a crowd? All of us. He says to everyone that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers. So he's just not picking on any one religious group. He's throwing us all in that same basket this morning, which I think is pretty darn accurate. How many of you have been baptized? I've been baptized, okay. I, I'm not going to ask the other one because it's really embarrassing sometimes. How many haven't been baptized? Oh, I ask it. Don't raise your hand if you haven't been, okay? But that was John's job, to get people ready for their baptism. And today's passage is all about preparation, getting ready. And I want to just kind of hone in on the specifics that he's talking about today. I don't know about you, but a baptism worth repentance. When I think of baptism, I cannot not, there's a double negative there for you, I cannot not think of sin. Any sinners in the room today? Those of you on the radios, raise your hands, okay? Those of you watching, yes, yeah. Uh, one of the lines that, uh, I, that just really kills me that floats around society about church-going folk, you know what they say, they say about us? You're all a bunch of hypocrites, and the church should stand up and say, oh, yes, we are. Oh, darn right. You hit that right on the head. Are you trying to insult us? But we're not only hypocrites, we're trying to recover from hypocrisy, aren't we? That's the difference. I wish they would finish that with, oh, the church is full of hypocrites. But they're recovering hypocrites. And if there's anything I want to recover from, it's that. So I immediately think about how I hurt God. That's what sin does, isn't it? It hurts God. And here's just a little basic a systematic theology coming your way. If it's good for God, it's good for you. Right? If it's good for you, it's good for what do you think about that? Just a little systematic theology. I'm not talking about what makes you feel good or what your practices are, where you get your highs and lows and the warm fuzzies. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just basically talking about if it's good for you, it's good for God, and if it's good for God, it's good for you. They run hand in hand. They both belong together. So when that phrase came up in the passage about making my repentance worthy of my baptism, first of all, I want to talk about repentance. Ho, ho, ho. 
So, uh, can y'all see the cross? Can you see me? Hey, I know it's going to be hard for some of you to believe this, but I'm a sinner. It's not hard to believe? Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, in relationship to the cross, because I'm a sinner living in sin, what's happening in relationship to me and that cross there? Any observations? But distance, distance. I'm, I'm, because of my sin, getting further and further. Am I making you all nervous? I'm out here in the crowd today. That's how I used to preach all the time until we had this camera. <laughs> and, you know, I keep messing up. I keep hurting God. And I've even been to this point where I couldn't move any further, but my back was still towards God. Who can relate to that? Anybody? I think everybody, right? So I came back in this. Uh, am I in the camera again yet? No? I, I need to do this part. Now pretend I'm on the back wall. Where am I in relationship to the cross? I'm furthest away that I could be. Yeah, we've all been there. Now what I like about this repentance thing it's kind of like salt only takes a little bit to get you started I mean you don't take the whole salt shaker and give it yeah no no you go a little bit at a time and you know coming away from sin is like that it sometimes takes baby steps to get us back so we can face God again it's a hard thing to face God sometimes especially when we've hurt God. But watch this. Completely back. Either way you want to turn, right or left, we need to turn from our sin, need to start moving away from our sin. So here it is. Uh-oh, did you see me move? Yeah, God, God saw that. Jesus saw that. And he has a lot of hope for you and I. So we realized we don't have to live in our sin anymore, do we? Little by little, we get the strength, and we start turning. Oh, let's say you're right-handed. Go this way, okay. <laughs> but what happens to me now? How many degrees did I turn, folks? Go ahead. Yeah, you can talk to me anytime. 180 degrees, right? Yeah. So at 180 degrees, I moved totally from darkness into the total light of the love of God. Incidentally, I don't see that cross as a thing of hatred. I see it as a piece of love that God used. You may see it differently, but that's how I've come to know because God loved us so much that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not die, but will live how long? Forever. Amen. That's familiar. <laughs> There's a catch. <laughs> and there's always a catch. <laughs> Dog got it. They were asking, well, who are you, John? John says, well, I'm the baptizer. Da, 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 da. Well, what does that mean? Well, God picked me, okay, to talk about the coming of his son. Incidentally, his name is, oh, come on, church. His name is Jesus. All right. Now, you all have an opportunity, like you just told me, to live how long? Forever. This is news, news, like we sang in the song. Never heard before. Oh, maybe the scholars and the higher-ups were told. But now, 
all the people here that God is sending his son to help you get away from your sin. Now, if you have the courage, if you have the courage to turn a little and realize who this person is that God is sending, the Christ child, you will have that opportunity through your belief in him to live forever. But there's only a catch, just one catch. As Luke says, he doesn't just single out one group of people he talks to us all and i love that i do i can't stress that enough because i am a sinner say that with me i am a sinner amen but because god loves you well you knew that was coming didn't you the next thing that happens is this my heart is strangely warmed my face is strangely warm because I'm turning towards, here it is, here it is, I'm turning towards the sun. <laughs> S-O-N, okay. <laughs> and then John throws this out, but, but, oh, here it is. You have to mean it. Because you're wanting to come for the dog and pony show and see people walk in here and get dunked, and you're thinking that's going to give you eternal life. Huh. No, this is just a running bathtub. It's just the Jordan River. You're only getting wet if you don't have a change of heart. And in your change of heart, it has to be permanent. Permanent. I think we forget that from time to time, that the commitment to Christ isn't an on-again, off-again kind of thing. And that's what John's speaking to. It's a wholehearted, committed move to do good and to use your fruits to make that worthy of why you repented. I don't like to live in sin. You don't either. Nobody does. It's a terrible place to live. And that moment when we feel turning towards the sun and that light hitting us, and then when we fully stand in front of him, and we've done that 180-degree turn, that's when we say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I understand why Jesus died for my sin. Hey, nobody else in here can do that. I can't do it. Only Jesus. I'm about done. Giving you, giving you fair warning. All right. So what's your first fruit? You, you may have a bunch of first fruits. Up uh, here. I'm going to warn the camera people. I was yelled at a couple weeks ago when I went to the piano. I'm going to the piano. All right. Is that all right with you all? All right. So if I sit down at the piano, what don't I have in front of me? Right? No music. What was the name of that song? No, it was Jingle Bells. <laughs> no music. Just sat down. Now, some people think I, buy, I play by ear. I don't. I use my hands. I really do. But every time I make music, I give it to God. I don't care where I am. In church, out of church. Yesterday, the neighbor girl came. I played for her. She wanted to hear me play the piano. I know. And I gave it to God. John is saying, when you come to God, realize 
that you're going to have more than you can ever hold. Because when you give your first to God, God gives you his best. And you never run out. And it's always there. And it's a gift from God. So whether you spin a wrench, teach kids, are a nurse, make candy, oh, that's a good vocation, I'm telling you, or whether you pack things in boxes, whatever your gift is, don't forget to give God the very best, the very first. Now look at each other and say those three words that make this place light up. God loves you. Just go ahead. <laughs> For those of you on radio and TV, God loves you. Want to lift up a couple of families. Uh, the Cope family lost their father this week. And... Uh, Funeral arrangements are being made right now. And some of you may have known a lady from Fooseland. Her name is Elsie Meese. Elsie went home to be with Jesus. Uh, she died last week as well. I uh, don't know her arrangements yet, but I want to lift those two people up as we lift up others that we know who are dealing with grief, especially because of this pandemic, okay? So... It was a mess this week for the kindergartners at school at GCMS. I don't know how many times the kids were tested, at least five. And I think they are going to be tested again at six, trying to sort out if it's safe or not to be together. Uh, it's still here, folks, and do what you can. Do your part. That's all I'm going to preach about today on that, okay? I know within the dynamic of this congregation, there are people who are going to have some procedures, and I don't mention names. That's not the place right here to do that. Uh, there's some folks who have had procedures. I know folks who are dealing with financial stress and troubles. I know folks who are dealing with addictions. There are people who are having relationship problems Equally, there are people who are starting brand new relationships. That might be with another person or a vocation. It might be in some new area that they've never been in in their life. I lift all that up to us. I celebrate. Oh, the biggest challenge of Christmas time, I tell you, is all the things that are before you that you use your hand to put in your mouth. I pray for all of you who are struggling with that this season. This sermon gave way to something that I need to let you all know. And John came to baptize, and I tell you right now, if you have not received your baptism and you're in a place right now saying, I want to be part of that thing that Jesus called us to, uh, if you haven't had your baptism, right now is a good time to come forward. I've got water. I can really get you wet today. We'll wash away your sins, and Jesus will come into your heart. Amen. <laughs> So, I give that invitation. I don't see anybody springing up. If that's too much in your face and you would like to talk about baptism with me, I'm available. Give me a call, send me an email, shoot me a text. I would love to be in that place with you. Now I want to invite you to go to that place we go where we find Jesus and we have one-on-one -on -one time with him. Spend some time there, and then we'll go into the regular prayer, pastoral prayer, finished with the Lord's Prayer.
thank you for giving us that time, God. Next week we are in the final Sunday of Advent, and then we're at Christmas Eve, and the next thing you know, we're all gathered around our families, and we're celebrating the best gift that has ever been given. His name is Jesus. It's been a good Sunday. There's been people here that haven't been here since I came. <laughs> I consider that a good thing. There's people listening on WGCY that tell me weekly, I never miss a week. And there's people from all over central Illinois watching on Facebook. And it's all because of you, God, and your gift. As I mentioned earlier, those things that I pray about, ranging from COVID to personal relationship, we give them all to you. Those things that are silent in our hearts that we can barely confess ourselves, we give to you. And the reason I say that is we give them to you so they can be forgotten. Just like you say you do with all of our sins, you don't remember them anymore. It's like they never happened when we come to you. I pray for a good week this week, for us to make a difference in the world and for someone else to come to know you. That would be the best gift of all this year. I think about the Christmas mornings and the difference that all the churches make in the philanthropy that we do. I thank you for the businesses. I thank you for the people that go the extra distance for others this time of year. Yesterday we had a salute to the workers who were helping out in the flood in many ways. And as I watched that, I'm going to call it a parade, of police cars and squads and vans and boats, I thought of all the hundreds of thousands of hours that were put in because people were in need. <laughs> what a wonderful community we live in, and thank you for that. Wouldn't be right if we didn't bring all the focus to where the focus needs to be, and that is on the gift that you have given us through your son, Jesus. One of the best gifts of all is this 45 seconds when we come together every week and we get to pray together. And you center us in and you call our words together and collecti collectively we pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, the happiest moments that we have in our worship service right now, we get to collect. <laughs> Well, you all didn't. Hey, let's ask the ushers to come forward, and I'm going to watch you smile, okay? All right. Two more coming, just letting you know. All right.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, of the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. A few weeks ago, I taught you a song that I learned from my African brothers and sisters. Let's see if you retained it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Alleluia, amen. Jump in there. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Listen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Alleluia. Amen. Now the last one is kind of between you and Jesus, and they sing it like this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. And the whole church says, Amen. Well, are we ready to sing our closing hymn? Say, sure we are. Yeah, all right. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Look at everybody and say, I'll see you here next time. Now, now don't make me a liar. <laughs> <laughs>